spoken lately. I haven't thought about flying for a long time. I have a dream that at that moment when I was alone above the clouds for a long time. I have dreamed of waking up in a room surrounded in blue and green grass for more years than I could dream of memory. I have not walked back into the past or scratched on the doors of my origins, where it all came from, since I held up that cape for the last time. Return to Kent Town 10th year anniversary edition is a revised version of Andy Ann's first poetry book. The book can be purchased from Amazon and it contains numerous additional material. Spoken Label Hi, it's Andy Ann from Spoken Label. A spoken label was originally set up at the beginning of 2016 and records show it started off really as a one-off podcast chatting to writers, poets and artists. Over time, it became monthly, then weekly and occasionally nowadays it goes on back to a more regular basis. To date, I've done over 330 sessions and I'm always looking for new poets, writers, artists, singers, songwriters, general interesting creative people to come onto the podcast. You can find this on all the usual networks over Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Podbay and dozens of others. But it does have a central database of spoken label, which is all one word, dot bandcamp.com. Obviously now, to help me with the running costs of this podcast, I'm always grateful for any kind of donation to assist me with it. You can even do the donation through the Bandcamp page by putting in a fee to download one of the free podcasts or send it over to my PayPal to aen1mpo at yahoo.co.uk my email address again is aen1mpo at yahoo.co.uk. Enjoy the podcast. Take care. Bye. Spoken Label. Hey guys, Andy N. Spoken Label back in the house on a Sunday evening. And it's raining. <laughs> but a fourth, we've got a fourth week now of rain every day, which kind of makes sense. So. Let's go somewhere else where it's not raining and it's absolutely boiling. So we're heading over to Texas today and we've got a lady with us today. Now, well, I've been talking to this lady for a couple of years now, but I've never actually met her till now. Mostly because I got talking to her husband originally a couple of years ago, the amazing Tom Oves. And like, it kind of makes sense because when we've got Lou Ann with us today, his wife, but Lou is an amazing artist and a singer-songwriter in her own niche basically as well aren't you brilliant i want to talk to you for ages so luan obviously people that don't know you first of all then tell us a bit about yourself as a person and where all your creativity came from okay first of all thank you for having me i'm thrilled to be here and talk to you and yes i'm in texas and it is in the hundreds and the only the only moisture is what is coming off of the sweating texans so here so we're the opposite of y'all but but no i am from a small town in illinois called effingham illinois and and uh, was born there I went to college in carbondale illinois and really what but life-changing thing for me was i took a class in college where you know this guy walks in and he's a hipster guy and 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 said i'm going to take you to nashville and put you in front of all of the, the executives of nashville so you so you can learn about it and we're all like oh, yeah right you know nobody you know but sure enough the bus pulls up at five in the morning and so through that class i learned about nashville and that's why i moved to nashville loaded up my ltd my car and went there by myself which now I can't imagine, can't imagine. And so I went there and and work, what I did was I worked in and around the music business, always doing creative stuff, but, but in and around the business because I really wanted to see what the business is like. And because of my college class and my teacher, by the way, Henry Ramersa, huge life changer for me. Thank you, Henry. Um, but when, when I got there and, and I saw the business, what I realized is, Oh, that's got nothing to do with the creativity. 
you know, like I would be a runner at arena metal shows, like these big shows just to see, I don't want, you know, I don't aspire to that, you know, like the pressure and just what goes on. And so I, I, after doing all that, it's like, I ended up really coming, you know, where I did a lot more things like seeing in nursing homes or seeing in prisons, Mm. therapeutic. I like that a lot, you know? Um, And then, and and we we started our record label uh, in 1991, and as I mentioned to you earlier, we put out 15 of Tom's albums, and and I guess I'm someone who's not as like put me on the stage and yeah yeah you know I'm I'm not really like that per se, um so so you know I had I was doing more of the background things and, and things like that but but we got to a point in 97 96 where I was like okay and I had enough songs and I, I wanted to do something um so that's how at the vortex came about yeah I think we should talk about that in the vortex first because like I've been playing this back over the past week so it's absolute it's a really great album really oh, really wow. is I've had a great so pleasure. Pl- I've had a great pleasure playing all that back before to a couple of times in the last week or so, and it's ironic actually because I know on the if you people check online there is a reissue knocking round that's got a bonus track on it wrote by your husband Tom, which yes. kind of links into what your next project's going to be. But we'll come on to that later on, okay. right? So, so tell us first of all about at the vortex and about the, about the history about the vortex and. Well, um, you know, I had, had gathered some songs and it it, 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 it really was split in, it's it split into two parts, kind of. Um, the first part is, was done at Rob Earls, uh, who, RIP Rob, a great friend, uh, you know, a real important person in Nashville in, in a country music sort of town. He was the punk rock underground studio guy and Tom had done a lot of albums there and I loved Rob and you know and and so that's why it's called at the vortex his studio is named at the was named at the vortex um so we got the the players together which you know because Tom recorded we knew a lot of players and we got there's some amazing you know folks playing on there um that that we got in And, and the initial recording I'll say Ken Coomer who's, you know, been in a lot of big bands and just a great guy, an amazing drummer. He and I, it started out with Vortex. He and I got together in the studio and and he did percussion and I played guitar and sang. So that first part of the album, that all kind of started that way with just the, he, you know, the percussion of some sort and, and then me and the guitar and then the other musicians added on just these sonic sounds, you know, that, the the that the just it, it it blew my mind you know but it was very different it was very not like you know three chords in the troop you know your your a basic song you know it, it, the songs you know um and then basically that we we did that part in in the set and then the second part was uh with different musicians and at uh, barking dog which is tom my husband's studio so he was doing the engineering and the recording and such, uh, and p- always playing. And you know, he plays everything, and so he always played on there. Um, and in that part, we, you know, we did it, it basically at our house in our stu- house in the studio. And then just to say, the last two tracks, which I will say, kind of freaked a lot of people out because it's me and a saxophone this amazing Dennis Taylor, amazing sax player who unfortunately is, you know, dead, RIP Dennis, love you. Um, but but for a while now, but so it, we did a live, it, that that was live, like the stuff with Ken Coomer, a lot of that was live, the percussion, and then this, that that was live. That, I mean, he was so busy, he's playing with, you know, on the road a lot. So, so that's like a couple of live uh, takes of the two last songs. Which I'll, I'll I'll really say that recording experience is is you know I've done a lot of recording and background and fronts and it, anything you can imagine but but that's maybe the highlight because because it was so hard you know it was so like oh my god oh my god because he's so amazing he's playing these amazing solos and on one I'm playing it's, I was hitting on something I don't know what it was it, you know and and I don't know if I can cuss can I say bad words on here go for it go for it I have no problem with that oh, okay. <laughs> all I've know, got all I've got to do Lou and I've got to remember the offensive button when I upload it and <laughs> I'll, worry about, I'll worry about that 
<laughs> That's right. Well, it's not that bad, but I'm just saying the entire last whatever, last verse of that, I'm like, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Because, you know, you know, it, because it's like when you get a takes that are just like, don't, you know, we're, we're, because for me, who wrote one of the songs, it one's an old blues song, like hearing it like that, and it's the first time you've heard it. I mean, it's hard not to just go what, stop and listen. But anyway, so so that's the basic, you know, story of Vortex, um, you know, and then we put it out. Um, and, and, you know, it got it, it, like people liked it, some people, but some people just didn't because to be a saxophone and what are these songs and sonic sounds and what's going on here. So, it, you know, and, and kind of after that, I, I, as you know, 25, I had a long period of time, 25 years, because I was kind of like, you know, I don't know if, you know, if I'm cut, not cut out for it, but I just don't know, you know, I'd rather just create. I don't know if I want, because you know, it's like putting out a book. Any of the people, writers, creative people, you do the stuff and it's great, but then dealing with how to get it in the, get it to people is yeah, the business side of it is always not as much fun as the actual not creating. Creative. It, well, no. it's a different kind of creativity, I guess you'd say. But yeah, no, and I don't the self promoting schmoozing and all that. I mean, it, yeah. So, but yeah, so that's no, it's, the story. it. Really, is people are checking out. There's some tremendous tracks on it, and ironically, my favorite track is one of Tom's tracks. Actually, would you believe? Oh, which one? <laughs> uh, I like both of them. I the two. Um, Oh, I'm trying to read all, oh, all for naught, the bonus one, all for naught, the bonus one. I love oh, that one. I did, love. but I even preferred oh, I've, I've, the other one and um, gone to Mexico even more. I thought gone to Mexico yeah. was beautiful stuff. It was really, really powerful. Oh, thank you. I'll tell you the 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 the, the real side note there. When we the reason you know, we lived in Nashville for 18. I didn't say that we lived for Nashville 18 years, and everybody we knew from Europe would be like, "Why are you in Nashville? Why aren't you in Austin?" And we we're like, no, no. And then finally, we, you know, we came here. Um, but okay, I, I the, the train went off the. I started thinking about moving to Nashville. What was my? What was take me back? What was I? No, I was saying. Okay, you can edit this, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, what? I started thinking we moved to Nashville, and you know how your head like goes in a different direction. Yeah. It's like, oh shit. Anyway, um, but whatever it was, if it's important, I'll find it later. But, but yeah. So, so anyway, that that's kind of how that came about. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. Now, I said before, it's, this is not the only thing I want to talk to you about today. You're a fantastic album because I I've been really studying your artwork on the last couple of days as well. Like it is, and you've lost that. We've got an exhibition. You've done an exhibition, haven't you? On my page, my internet's are frozen. But I'm all Simon's memories, which I've got dropped. I've dropped. Right, one minute. This will be getting audio only. <laughs> right, one second, Luke. Is the internet better now? It dropped to my side, then it did. Oh, did it? No, yeah, it's fine. I remember it. It gave me a second to go. Oh yeah, what I was talking about was uh, gone to Mexico. The reason yeah. we moved here, one of the catalysts, was there was this DJ here, Larry Monroe, also R.I.P., who long time Austin. Like a lot of people, be familiar with him if you're familiar with you know music here. Um, and he's the one that would try to get us to move here. But he played Gone to Mexico on his radio show all the time. He played that all the time. So when you the fact that you picked that one out, it's kind of special yeah, to me. I've really enjoyed it before, dude. I was playing it back and I thought, oh, this is really is I really felt it. I really felt it like it was interesting though, like the review I've just been looking at before online. And I don't always agree with reviews, but the review that cropped up on R P which you put on your website did praise you for your way to be you know, your ability to interpret other people's songs. Yeah. And I think it's a really difficult thing to do when you do interpreting other people's songs and you know yourself when you have a lot of covers. Like it's very rarely people can do it. And I thought you had you had the album, and the covers are brilliant on it. You really can really well, put yourself into the songs, particularly Tom's. Yeah. <laughs> well, or, yeah, I mean I mean, I think the thing is when you're choosing something to take to record. It's going to be something. It's like I said to you earlier. You know, Tom's songs. He's such a great songwriter. It's amazing, um, and and there's so many of them. You know, thousands of songs, um, and and it's very they're easy to sing. 
you know, it's not even just me. Players would always say that, you know, when, when he records, you know, he would always make a tape where he'd play all the instruments and say, here's kind of what I'm looking for. And so it gave like Nashville players thinking of them, it gave you a chance to really, you know, experiment and put your own tag on it as opposed to just trying to figure out what they want. So, so he working like that with him on his stuff helped me to really, you know, get into that as well. Feel it. Yeah. No, I can say it straight away. It's really great stuff. Now I want to talk to you obviously now a bit about your art. So mm -hmm. like, I know you're a massive artist and it's, it's where people go on your website to have a look at this because first of all about your all Simon's memories exhibition, which is about, I know it's about your mum. So tell us about then where this came from. Where it came from was, you know, uh, my mom RIP uh, passed in 2012. Um, and, it, you know, so it was a long, anybody who's dealt with that knows that's a long haul and it's a real tough deal. And, and I just, you know, I had, I had some paintings where I had done where I didn't, you know, didn't know what I was going to do with them. And then it, it, the more the, you know, the, the harder it got with her, it's like, you know, as poets, as writers, anybody, you put that into your creative, you know? And so I started, and it kind of really evolved over time um you know with with the paintings and it, for instance there's one painting that's that's really you know there's a lot, a lot of color and because i'm trying to make it where it's it's beautiful and that the music where where it's because it, it's a real like reading it's a tough thing to even to look at you know because it's such a hard subject but 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 people have told me who are dealing with alzheimer's with their own loved ones how much it, it like it it connects to them because yeah. everybody deals with well any disease with a loved one and you, you know because we can't fix it you yeah, know so, no, so kind of, yeah all that went together into you know but there was like one painting for instance this is stark you know the tag on it is a stark painting for a stark situation i.e nursing home and if you I mean it's just this this room and that was something that when i was I had the other paintings and I was coming up with the storyline of it. And, and when I saw that painting, I was like, Oh, that's what that painting is. Like, I didn't even know, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's a painting <clears throat> because it is very stark looking that a lot of people point out because it's like, Oh, cause it's, it's kind of just an empty, you know, like building, you know, hall kind of thing. But it, it, it shows you just, you know, where am I? you know, what is this now? So, yeah. So, so that, yeah, it came from a lot of different directions that, that. Yeah. No, it's you know. interesting. We've been such a long, it's quite a long sequence of poems. I think it was 13 paintings, if memory is correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How did you approach it on the storyboarding side of that? Because that must have been a really tricky process for you. Would it been such a personal project to you? I was talking about your mum. Yeah. Well, oh no, it was. And honestly, it's like, you know, I first did got that up, you know, probably in 2013. And 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 I had a lot of things come up, but I really couldn't. I stepped back from really pushing it or getting it out there. And now with some passage of time, it's not quite so raw. You know, so that's why now I, I really want to get it out to the world more. But but yeah, that that it was very difficult. But 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 it was so important to me. And it was a way, you know, like in like any kind of writing, it's a way to 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 really deal with your feelings, you know, how to, to deal with the pain and deal with. And, and my way of doing that was to to think about, you know, what does she feel like? Not what do I feel like about her? You know, and and the and the the, the you know and and looking for not what's gone, which is very hard to not do. You know, uh, but but look for for what's still in there, like find something in there. You know, so that kind of stuff it really you know helped me heal. Yeah, no, I get complete with it because I uh, I've not had and my family members get it, but I've had a friend of mine that lost both his parents to Alzheimer's disease, oh, and he lost them. You know, he lost one. Over a five-year period, then his mum went down straight after he died, and she was dead within six months. I remember both of them. It was just like you had oh. the long, drawn-out side of it, and then the quick one, and both were horrific diseases. It's horrible, and yeah. and then see what I there's no you know good side or lucky about it, but 
but it was mom, you know, I had a single parent, you know, raised by a single parent. So it was one person. I can't imagine dealing with a parent, dealing with their partner, you know, because yeah. th- th- I mean, that's, you know, it's one thing your folks, but it's another, your, you know, your partner. I mean, your, your, you know, your husband or yeah. wife or whatever. Oh, you know? God, yeah. God, yeah. yeah. I know, oh, like I said, we've been, you, like I said, you, you don't with your partner stuff like that is, it was just soul destroying. So that's why I've, I really felt for you when I was reading. I could see the colorization what you're trying to get at with that, and just everything slowly going to pieces on it. And it's, it's yeah. really, really, it's a, it's a beautiful piece to look at on your website, but it's upsetting as well. If that makes sense. And it's quite different as well, really, from your other stuff on your website as well. Because I love, and I've not got titles to some of these other pieces on there. Unless oh, they're hiding on me and I can't see them. No, like it. You love some of other styles and stuff. So when you were doing this, did you find like your style where your art changed temporarily, didn't it, over the period of this? Well, my style, as it were, because I'm not, you know, as I like to say, I kind of overstudied music. So when it came to my art, when I started doing that, which when I realized, you know, I don't want to be a star. Or I don't want to, you know, do, I, it's just not what I want. I want to create and I'm comfortable with the art. The art like is like writing, you're creating by yourself, you know? And I really like that aspect. Like by the time somebody's looking at it and having their opinion, I'm not there, <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that I really like that. Um, but, but I, so I didn't study and I just decided when, when I paint, gonna uh, 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 it's it's whatever comes out it's not like i am going to paint this it's more like this free form jazz kind of thing it, you know and, and i started out doing a lot of um working on raw wood oh to so, do you know oh I, whoa I go, whoa yeah, oh yeah look in the wood a oh, wood grain i mean sometimes if you just sit and look at a wood gra- something with a good grain to it and you'll see like a hundred things in there you know and and, and so that's what I would do. And then that became from there, I, I you know, I went to not having that and, and starting with an abstract. Like I'll do an abstract and then wow. and then I'll look at it and it let it tell me what it's going to be. It, it, you know, that that's kind of how how I do it. So that's why it's always something different. And I have I'll tell you what. I haven't I, I have our entire house is full of art. I have, like I said, I'm a better painter than peddler. So, so there's a I lot imagine of- Imagine yeah, your house lab, you two. You've got like oh, half, the, half of it's full of Tom's guitars and the other half it, is full of your art. <laughs> yeah, well, no, my art has actually, his. we each have our own like studio rooms and then the art is like, in, like there's no more room because you know you don't want to stack it. Oh, there are stacks of it. So I just, I need to, I need to get it together and do the part that nobody likes, which is, the website and the picture, you know, and the measure, you know, and all that, because I want to get it up there. But I put it on Facebook a lot. I'll, I'll put paintings up on there, the current stuff. Can't blame you there. Yeah, I can imagine all brilliant stuff indeed. So now it's fascinating, really, when you played a video back on it before. So you're telling me before, obviously, we look at the exhibition on on your YouTube page. You picked one of your songs out from your album, didn't you? And it flowed really, really well with that. Obviously, if, tell us about the. I'm not going to say which song it was. I'll let you tell people. But obviously, okay. tell us about the decision, how that seemed to work so well. Because it's almost like it was great symmetry. And I'm not sure oh. whether it was on purpose or accident. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a, the happy accident, which is kind of the way I roll, right? <laughs> I think, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, it's like, bumbled into it. That's kind of the, the way I do stuff. Uh, for better or worse but yeah no it it, um um what happened was that when I was putting it to get you know the process of of putting which you know that took for that took a long time Mm -hmm. you know putting you know the different um you know the different paintings in what order and then coming up with the the writing and so while I was doing that I used a couple of Portishead songs because I just had a a thing and I love Portishead we talked about that we both love Portishead yeah big fun big fun and I like moody stuff, you know, I like moody things. And so I put it on there and then I realized, well, I can't like do a video and upload that to YouTube be- because it's Porter's head. They won't let you. So, um, so I, I went looking and just by pure chance, 
I put on the first song on, on at the vortex is called contemplation, which in hindsight is like, you know, your mind, your thinking, your mental contemplation. It it, it kind of went. And then when I, when I attacked it onto YouTube, the, the video, it was perfect. Like even like when I looked at it and some of the, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but like where there'll be a line in the song, which all of a sudden goes with that picture. And that, that, yeah. no, that was like, some divine intervention because that, that, that kind of had nothing to do with me that just i lucked out on that yeah no it works really really well and it's like it is a great song and it you're right it flows those paintings so majestic it does indeed so but that's so brilliant now the last part of the chat i want to do usually loop and this again is going to go on for a while this because i you just told me about this before and I'd, i've forgotten you told me about this as well it's difficult for me but it's what you're doing next at the moment which is a joint right. project between you and tom isn't it as well so yes yes what can be revealed about this to people then? what can be revealed well what it is is that you know i've always loved singing tom songs uh, because his songs are, are great and and it, what i've done is i'm i'm and I've recorded a lot. There's even on the website, if you really dig in there deeper, some other recordings of more not studio, you know, you know, mixed in the studio kind of stuff, but just more, a looser stuff. Um, but I've always loved doing his songs. So what I'm doing is is uh, um, picking, you know, his songs that I really relate to. And then I'm singing, you know, so we're doing versions, but that's a long way of saying we're doing versions of his song with me singing but it's all you know it's different like I'm coming with where I'll put it down and say this is kind of what I'm going with my weird kind of thing you know and, and then and then he is this multi-instrumentalist and stu guy in the studio and so he he's able to kind of do all of that like do all of it and then we you know we're kind of working together and we'll know or yes but his instincts are really great and 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 as I said to you before, it's just amazing to to sing a song where I don't ever think about playing anything. I can just sing, and and it's the it's so well written that it's easy to sing. It's like when you do your poetry readings. You know, if a po you know a poet's poem is really good if you get up there and you read it and you can feel it, or even at home, you know, you read it out loud, and if it's if it flows, you know, you've done it. You know, so that's yeah, the yeah, way you I do. You do. Yeah. And I say, so I've read a bit before, you know, like a piece I'm co-writing with Amanda. And it's been great fun reading up reading to people. I do need to read each other's pieces back to each other sometimes. And that's yeah. why I thought it's a great project you and Tom have got on the go with it straight away. So how have you found it with the selection of the songs so far? Have you been picking out the songs that you really like? Or has Tom been saying, Oh no. Luan, yeah. will this song go with you? No, 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 no. It's me. It's ones that like I said, because I'm drawn you know, because we're very different people, you know, you know, just our, you know, he, he, his songs are, you know, can be really deep and intense and not that I'm not deep and intense, but, you know, I, I, I'm always looking for something that's, you know, I don't know that, that it's got to be a message that I go, that's me, you know, that's something I, I would say, you know, so, and that's important anyway, I think any doing a song to do it well, it's got to be something that you feel and would, you know, that your truth somehow. So, so that's what I'm looking for. And the first one we've done is called Song for the Homeless. And, and I always love that song. And it's like, it means a lot to me because I, I know y'all, it's the same there. The homeless crisis is, you know, and I've worked with nonprofit and I've worked on, you know, helping homeless, you know, those kind of, kind of jobs. And, 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 you know, it's such a problem that, that to do something that, that in a way that's, you know, because it's always about, how do I say this, trying to get people who don't necessarily agree with, you know, we don't all have to agree, but it's like show, saying this is a problem and these are people. And, and, you know, this isn't in the song, but something that I really think of when people like kind of are like, oh, homeless, you know, whatever, get a job, you know, just don't understand it or they're drunks or whatever. It's like, there's a lot of homeless people who are veterans. A lot yeah. of homeless people. We've got this. Know, We've got the same problem in England and that straight away because it's a rising, worrying number of ex-soldiers and ex-military that come, come homeless, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then it's like, if you don't have, you know, once you get on the street, you don't have, you know, if, if, like from where I, I worked and you realize that, okay, if you don't have, you know, getting, getting, you can't get a job, you have an ID. Well, you can't get an ID unless you have blah, 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 blah. You have to have all this stuff. And if you're homeless, 
chances are you don't have any of that stuff. So it, it's just a difficult situation. Well, this song was, was very close to my heart and it, you know, and it, it, it has a real meaning to me and a meaning to a message I want to share with people to try and get people even who, like I said, who don't agree with, the, you know, the, to me that we need to, you know, hell homeless, at least it might change your mind if it's wrapped in a song that you can listen to and, you know, that might draw, the song might draw you in. Yeah, makes... straight away. No, brilliant. So, so you've, I know you've done three songs to date in the art this project, haven't you? So, so. Yeah. It, well, actually, two, but I've got oh. I already got the third one picked out. Ah, third one I've picked out. The third one. One. Well, and poor Tom, because he's like always every day of his life, he's writing and recording. It doesn't it stop. That's what he is. So it's like I'm like, okay, next, and it's like next. You know what I mean? But it's like you know, like so. So I'm very aware that I I I don't want you know I want I want us to do I want to do this, but I, I'm very you know respectful of his time and his creativity. And we, that's where we get, we really, you know, we really jive with that. You know, we're both, you know, as you, you know that, you know. Yeah, no, you know, definitely. You, know, you definitely know, know that. Yeah. It's awesome. Really. Yeah, creative. same. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the full album this one, Lou, when it's eventually ready. And yeah, I'll tell you now, yeah. I'll, give you well. <laughs> I'll give you a spoiler as well. I'll give you a spoiler as well. I want to get you both on the spoken label to do a joint chat about this. And I'll see if I can get you arguing on the microphone. About yeah, it when no, it... That, that probably won't happen. You know, just, you know, Tom, you, you know Tom well enough to know that probably won't, that, no, not, no, probably that won't happen. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that wouldn't that, wouldn't that be something you want to see? Like if you and Amanda get you on there and a, no, 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 thing you said. Okay, it's me and Amanda. And we've been together what yeah. seven years now. We never had a really real row yet, to be you. So it's like we can, we know each other that well. It's like, it's like that with you and Tom. I see it straight away. So yeah, yeah, we've been together since the late eighties. Be really wow, wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, and we still yeah. like each other. Isn't that <laughs> odd? <awesome? laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, on the album itself, do you have any ideas when are you going to be out? It's going to be out yet, or are you not sure yet? Mm -hmm. No, not real. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm just not thinking like that because if I thought mm. like that, it, 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 you know, I, you know, what will probably happen is, uh, is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do it, you know, like release things like, like or, or get it up, you know, on the, the platforms and all that stuff you got to do now to where people, you know, I'll probably do more of that. I don't know. I haven't, it, it's not, it, it's, it, it's somewhat in its infancy. It, you know, it's happening and we're doing it. And I'll tell you, because the main thing for me, as you know, as an artist, you just got to get up and in the morning and go, I'm excited about that. that that's what it's about. So what happens, I, we'll, we'll have to see on that, but definitely something. Brilliant. Hopefully sooner rather than later then. That's the word I would use definitely that's use on right. that one. Now, obviously, that's people right. obviously... People that would have heard us last time when I chatted to Tom then. What's Tom up to at the moment, music-wise, that we can reveal and give people a little spoiler as well? Well, he, I mean, Tom's doing what he always, I mean, I, I, writing, and he's, he's working on his next release. I mean, through our entire relationship, we'd be like, he'd be like, well, another one. I'm like, another one? We just did the last one because he, you know, he's just, it, it, it's not, he, he, he's, he's very, he, you know, just create that way, but also he works at it, as you know. I mean, he works at it, and is what he does. So I don't know. I'm sure there'll be another release. It when I don't know, but but he could he could probably you know he he's in there. I can hear it through the walls. He'll be in there recording, uh, like like you know, and 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 he plays all the stuff on. Like right now, he's doing everything, and it's like a full band. It's not like a just him and a guitar. But so, you know, he, there's always new and I'll be like, oh, wow, that song, you know, that song, you know, when it finally comes out. So, so the, 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 the short answer, I went on about that a little bit, it, but the short answer is, is that he, he's creating. So, you know, there's no plan of anything on this date because it's, it's kind of impossible anymore. You know, yeah. and we were talking yeah. about there's so much music and, and getting to people especially when you're like us, where you're like, you know, we're not like, you know, we, we got to have this hat, you know, like you, you got to be kind of to make stuff happen anymore. Yeah. No, That's I agree. 
out of you what what you do over there i mean it's so hard like keeping like like keeping your 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 poetry readings like keeping books and writing and, and and getting other people involved that's very difficult so kudos on you for doing that that's, yeah that's it's just i get into it i get into routine I nowadays i do like it would be we're doing a sub me and amanda both do a sub stack page at the moment weekly and I can't say what Amanda puts down because sometimes she does new stuff, but I'm just going through archive material sometimes, pieces that should have been out 20 years ago, and I thought to myself, release them, edit them, release them. That's what I keep that's doing. So, right. yeah. But that's why. So, yeah. Anyway, look, what we'll do, Luke, we'll wrap up here. We're going to talk more off mic, more off mic anyway. So, so yeah, yeah. obviously, where can people find out more about you if they're, if they're so interested? Well, I and of course the website uh, uh, Um and and the name will be you'll have it on the L O U A N N and Bardash like dash for the bar backwards. That's how I, <laughs> my seventh grade science teacher said that to me. By the way, I was tagged with that dash for the bar, uh, <laughs> and and then and then it's on all as they say now all the platforms like you can get it on you know spotify and youtube and app all that stuff it's it's out there really and so obviously uh, people check out your website as well because the album's great it's well worth your time checking it out and then buying it definitely so i want to thank you today lou it took us what about a couple of years to get this to get the, get the wheels in motion here for this hasn't it really <laughs> Darn COVID, man. It really... Ruddy COVID, definitely, among other things, life in general. So it's been a pleasure. And I definitely want to get you on top on the joint podcast in the future, definitely, when they are, when these next projects out, definitely. So thank you well, again, Luke. Thank you for having me. Much been a pleasure. As Don Callis over at AEW Wrestling says, guys and girls, stay safe and stay over. And we will see you all next time. Spock on me. Who are lost on the
streets of its towns Lost on the streets of its towns Lost on the streets of its towns Spoken Man Oh.